Perfect. All right. So uh, let's kind of go through this. I'll hand out your test. You can see your scores. I'm going to want these back, so do not keep them. You should have nothing on your desk um, right now. So hand these back just so you can kind of see the see your scores. You can see if you wish to retake or not. Remember, you, have a, you have about a week if you wish to retake it. I don't like to go past that. Um, just because it just, um, if you're going to actually retake it, you're going to probably stop in. You're going to review with me all that good stuff. You guys know the drill and you're going to choose to retake. Um, the actual test scores here. Um, overall, um, I think the average score that I had overall, I think it was like a 65 or 64. It was high, like I had a lot of good scores. There were some, don't get me wrong, there were some scores that were definitely lower, but I had a lot of people that had 67, 66 throughout the day. Um, or uh, not 67, um, 65, 64, 63s. There was a ton of those, sorry. Um, it was just a lot of those scores were higher, so my average, I think it was 64, I'm pretty sure, 64, 63, it was in that ballpark. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's, let's walk through this. Okay, all right, I had a couple perfects throughout the day. All right, now, uh, let's go through the, uh, the actual questions here. Okay, first one, two, two geometric objects, they are perpendicular to each other, they meet at right angles. Two angles and a non-included side, that's what you have. Angle, angle, side, okay? Angle, angle, side. It's two angles and a non-included side, so the side is not in between them. So that this is literally what it's spelling, two angles and a non-included side. Uh, random third side is an isosceles triangle. The random third side, that is not congruent, that's their base. Uh, angles that are opposite the legs, those are your base angles. Those are across, they touch the bases. Uh, they are crossing the legs. Uh, two sides of an isosceles triangle are congruent, then the base, or the angles opposite of them are congruent. That is the isosceles triangle theorem. A lot of people just said isosceles triangle. It's the actual theorem. Um, the word isosceles just means two walls are the same. That's it. But when you say that the walls imply the angles are equal, that's the theorem. A lot of people have that backwards. And then three sides of a, of a triangle are equal. It's side, side, side. Okay. Um, I was, again, I, I said I was worried about these little acronym systems, but it actually, the most commonly missed question were these two. I was really confused. Like, a lot of, yeah. a lot of people kept saying for the RAM third side, I had a lot of people say the vertex. And I was like, scratch my head, like, vertex? They're talking about a side, a vertex is an angle, which I was really confused on. But anyways, um, moving on. Uh, next one, N corresponds to M across the picture. Nero here, N-E-R-O, N-E-R-O, that's M-A-R-O, so Maro. Um, angle E matches A, uh, A-M, that's going here to here, that's E to N. And then more would be nor. So more is going in and out, or in and down, in and down, so nor. So there you go. Um, Preferably you have the right letters and the symbols and all that, but I was really looking for the letters. Do you have them in the right order, all that good stuff? Okay? All right. Scrolling down to the next ones. Uh, this is problem number three. The first one is not equal. Um, here's the reason why. No matter if you go clockwise or counterclockwise, if you spin this direction, that side side angle, or if we go the other direction, it's the inappropriate one, that doesn't work. Even if you went counterclockwise and you spun this way, it would not spell the right acronym, that would be the inappropriate one. Now, I had a lot of people that asked during the day, was, um, I think even uh, one person here was like, well, if I go if I go counterclockwise this direction from here, it's spelling the right acronym, like S-A-S. -S. But the problem is, they're not actually connected. Side angle side means this. Side angle side. Where they're actually physically touching each other. They are not physically touching each other. It's actually spelling the inappropriate acronym. So that's a no. Uh, the next one is side angle side. This is side angle side because the side have the angle directly in between them. That's what side angle side means. 
If this angle on this first prime would have been over here, then yeah, it would have been side angle side. Because they would have been the angle would have been sandwiched in between the two walls, but it's not. Uh, then the last one, you did have to find the missing angle on both triangles, because again, triangles have to have it be 180. And once you find those, those angles, then you, you should realize that the reflexive wall in the middle is marked. They actually have the same markings. So it's by angle side angle. Or angle angle side, I guess. There's two options on that one. Uh, but, uh, but the idea was that you had to find the missing tri uh, the missing angles, because again, those are things you can fill in yourself, because triangles have to add up. And they actually do work. Moving on, this proof. Uh, I showed everything that you had to do there. Uh, I know a lot of people did the flow chart, fine. Uh, but you better have everything accounted for. Now the ones I had the little squiggly marks next to, it didn't matter the order those went in. Um, you could have put you know, the reflexive first, you could have put those other ones second. But line number one, you better have all the givens, which was this stuff. Line two, three, and four, you better have a reflexive somewhere in there, the wall in the middle. You better have some point where you said certain angles are equal to each other. Um, you know, I don't even mind if they're 90, but you better have certain angles that are equal. And then the other walls are equal because of midpoint. A lot of people like said midpoint, but they didn't actually state what it meant. Where you actually had to write the walls are equal. Because a lot of people are just marking the picture, but you have to, you have to tell me that they're equal. Okay, that was a big thing about those proofs. You had to state everything. Uh, then you had to get to the triangles and then get to that last thing. Now again, if you're doing the whole statement reason, there's your, there's your idea. But it was out of six points because it was six lines of work that you actually had to do unless you put certain bubbles together, which was fine. Um, last one on this page. You had to find the missing angle, um, which was 63, and then that forced the two walls to be the same. It was like ridiculously easy. It should have been like a two-second problem. It was not... It was not a right triangle, and you could not do Pythagorean theorem on that problem. It's not a right triangle. Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles. I had a lot of people going 10 squared plus 11 squared equals x squared. You can't do that. Um, you had to just find the missing wall, and then it showed two angles are the same, and that's isosceles. And then you could mark the walls that are equal, and I put arrows there. So it should have been a two-second problem. I had a lot of people like to ask, like, Ward, is, is that right? Is that, is, that, is that what I'm supposed to do? Yeah, but I couldn't tell you that. You just had to trust your instincts. Okay, all right, next. Uh, you had to simplify the radical. 180, I broke it down to 18 and 10. You broke it down even further. Um, then we broke this down even further. I had pairs. I kicked them out. And there's your answer of 6 root 5. Okay, that's how you're supposed to do it. In fact, I think, I think the one on your practice guide was eerily similar to that. It was almost the same numbers. I think instead of a 5, I had a 3 on the inside. Uh, I think it was almost the exact same problem. Um, next one, you did have to show work. You did have to show me what you're getting. So to find x, x is the altitude, so you put the altitudes here and here. You put the two parts of the bottom, 25 and 4 down here. You cross, multiply some equal, and you have to take the square root. If you'd have left it like that, that's fine, I would give it to you. But a lot of people put 10, which is fine. Now, if you went with the one of the legs, you had to use the leg, the wall closest to it, and the whole bottom, which was 29. Um, I had a lot of people forgetting the 29. They were putting like 25 or something. You had to use the 4 and the whole bottom, which is 29. You had to multiply these together, which was 116. You had to take the square root. You did have to show me the square root. Some people missed the point because they didn't put the square root on it. Um, then the last one, if you went with Z, you had to use the 25 and the whole bottom, which is 29. I got cut off. If I scroll over, you can see it. You, you multiply diagonally 25 times 29, which is like 725. Then you take the square root of it. All right. Anyways, there you go. Moving on. Most commonly missed part of this question, putting the 9 and 11 in the wrong spot, you missed a point. Okay. Um, if you didn't show any work, you wrote down the wrong answer. You missed all the points. That would have been four points off. Um, you had to show work. X squared plus 9 squared equals 11 squared. Now, why? It's that order. That's your hypotenuse. That better be the wall that's by itself. It's the biggest wall. So that better be by itself. A lot of people got that part wrong. That was really the only point that they missed. Then you square both, you subtract it over, you get 40, you take the square root, you can leave it like that. Uh, if you wrote 6.3, fine, but you could have left the square root of 40. That's all I asked for. Uh, I had some people trying to simplify it from there. That's fine. Just make sure you're doing that right. Next one. Okay, next problem. 
Um, the the six six eight. That is a triangle. The reason why any two walls you pick are more than the third wall. Now, when you plug it into the Pythagorean theorem, six squared, six squared, eight squared. That's what you get. And the 71 on the one side, actually it was 72, I believe, sorry, but 71. Uh, 72, that is bigger than 64. Um, so yeah, that's a typo. But anyways, uh, that is bigger than 64. And um, so that makes uh, that makes the hypotenuse too small, so it's acute. That should be a 72. All right, moving on. Last page. Now, here's a weird thing. I checked everyone's calculator multiple days in a row. I had a lot of people setting these up correctly, but I had a lot of wrong answers, which was confusing me. You had it all set up right, but I didn't have right answers. Confusing. All right, anyways, uh, when I label my picture, opposite hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse is sine so Katoa. So sine is um, 45, which was the opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, x over 12, you multiply the 12 across, you type this in your calculator, you get 8.4. The next one, when if I use 61, this is the opposite wall, that's the adjacent wall. Hey, shh. Um, so I have this set up, so tangent is opposite over adjacent, that's TOA, right? Uh, o over A. So opposite over hypotenuse, and I want the x on the bottom, you have to do a little switcheroo, I kind of warn you of that. So 100 divided by tangent is 61, which is 55. The next one, you had to pick one of the angles. Now, I put both here because I didn't know which one you guys were going to pick. I My original one is I picked 49. That was my original one. I just picked one at random. So I picked 49. So this would be the adjacent wall, and that would be the hypotenuse. So cosine is ka, right, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of 45 is adjacent over hypotenuse. You multiply the 100 across. That's what you get. If you picked the 41, you'd have to use opposite over hypotenuse, which would be sine. So O over H. Um, so sine is... Oh, 41 is x over 100 and multiply 100 across. It would have been the same number no matter how you did it. Uh, now, on the last one, again, I just picked one. I picked 55. Um, I believe this problem was very similar to the one on the practice guide. I think it was almost the same picture of that one. It was something really, really similar. Um, it was in the same orientation. All I did is I think I just changed the 8. It was like 120 on the practice. I just changed it to an 8. Uh, but anyways, um, so it's, I use 55, so that's adjacent over hypotenuse, that's the hypotenuse wall, so that's cosine of 55 is x over 8, you multiply 8 across. Now if you pick 35, you have to use sine, because it's opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, but anyways, you would get 4.5 or 4.6, however you want to write it. Um, and then the last one, you have to draw a picture. A lot of people, like, they just weren't drawing the picture right, which was kind of confusing, because I was trying to explain, you were standing so far from the launch pad, the rocket's already in the air, you're staying three kilometers from the launch site. So there's my three kilometers where it stands. It's on the ground, right? You're from the launch pad. Uh, you're, you're looking at an angle of elevation, which is 38. Elevation is looking up. You elevate, you go up, right? So 38 degrees. So I want to figure out how high is the rocket at that moment, the altitude of the rocket. So X, uh, that's opposite of the 38. It's the adjacent, so I'm doing TOA. Um, that's O over A, so O over A. Uh, so tangent of 38 is x over 3, you multiply the 3 across, you get 2.3, which makes sense. This, you weren't standing very far, it's a couple miles, so that means this wasn't very far. A couple miles. Okay, that's the idea. That's how you're supposed to set it up. Okay, questions. All right, I'm going to collect them back. If you wish to retake, you don't need to email me, you don't need to, you don't need to catch me in the hall. Just show up in the morning or after school. I'm here all the time, and we'll get a time set up for you. I would like to get this done by next Monday. I mean done, like completed. You are actually have already taken it. I already entered your new score. The reason why, I believe we have two or three weeks left before the end of the quarter. Okay, two. You need to get this thing done. Okay, I will not allow you to retake it after next Monday. So you have a little bit of time to think about that. Okay, I'm going to collect this back.
You want the lights on? Yeah, I can't really see. Just lay out everything. Okay, um, we're going to take a few notes over the second section of chapter six, which is called parallelograms. I kind of warn you, um, in chapter six, it's all about the quads. Well, quad doesn't really have a lot of properties other than just finding area, length times width, right? Let's say find area of quads. Um, and or how do you find the interior angles or exterior angles of a quad or the number of diagonals. There's really not a lot you can do until you get to the specific types, like a parallelogram or trapezoid, or you know, if we go even further in depth, if you talk about rectangles, that's when you have actual properties. Well, the goal today was to introduce the, the first style of the first type of quad, which is the parallelogram. Um, I want to discuss, you know, some of the major properties, maybe introduce a couple theorems today. My goal is to go through about maybe three theorems today. There's a total of, I think, I think there's five or six theorems about parallelograms, like total. Uh, I think we're going to see the first three today. That's what I want to get to. We do it. We do need to prove them. I'll kind of show you how they work. Uh, but they, they rely on triangles. So we're going to split things into triangles and show you how they work. Um, but anyways, uh, we'll kind of go through this. Let me see, where's my little clicker at? Aha. Okay, here we go. So, goal stay, we already reviewed the test, so that was kind of the first thing on the agenda. Uh, definitions, I'm gonna go through the parallelogram and then go through a couple of properties. Okay, these are the these are the main three I only go through today, if we can get to that. Um, once we're through here, I think I might stop today. I don't know how far we're gonna get, because these do take a while, you have to write them down, we have to talk about how to prove them. Um, but the whole goal is after we're through these main three is to discuss, you know, what we're going to see with them, like how we're going to use this. Um, these will be, you know, after those, you know, the first section finding interior angles, exterior, and diagonals. This would be the second style of problem on your next major test. It's not really a test. It's more like a quiz, really, because it's kind of short. But anyways. Um, anyway. uh, moving on. Uh, these are the next uh, few that we're going to talk about. Uh, these next three are the ones we're going to do tomorrow. So these three, six, seven through six, eight. That's what I want to talk about. There's a lot. I said there. I was kind of warning you. There's quite a few theorems about parallelograms in general. Um, these apply to any type of parallelogram. They, most of these do have names to them uh, as we get going. Uh, but yeah, there's a ton. I want to get through three today. Three more. That's kind of what I want to get through. Uh, homework due today, I think most of you turned that in, that was the 397. Now, if you were gone Friday, you have an excuse, you can get that done and turn it in tomorrow. Um, but again, if you were here, you probably had a plenty of time to work. I think you should have, what, 30 minutes, something like that on Friday? Should have, it gave you plenty of time to work. Hopefully that video worked um, that you, you had on Friday. I'll try to post that today so you can kind of watch it if you need to. It basically reviewed what the homework was. And, and then it kind of intro to what we're going to, which is parallelogram. It went basically through the definition of what a parallelogram is. All right, definition, let's go through that. Um, parallelogram, uh, by definition, is a quad, a four-sided figure, uh, but it has both pair of sides that are parallel. Now, the notation is the, the next major thing that I want to discuss. But again, a quad is a four-sided figure with both sides being parallel. Here's the picture, but this is the picture that they use as default in the book. That was the picture right by your textbook. Um, the notation that I'm going to give you here is how you actually write it. Like when we write triangles, we always draw like a mock picture of a triangle and you write the three letters. Well, when you do a quad or a parallelogram, you have to draw a mock picture of it and then put the, the letters behind it. So... Now, the, the letters in the order, you just have to go clockwise or counterclockwise, but you have to start with one letter and then go around the picture. And it could be any letter. So if you started at letter C um, and you went clockwise or counterclockwise, that's fine. You just you have to spin in a circle. Don't like hopscotch around. Don't like go diagonally and stuff. You have to actually follow the circle around or the object around. So C, B, A, B or C, B, A, B. It doesn't matter how which direction you went. As long as you have a mock picture and you have the four letters in order, clockwise or counterclockwise, from wherever you start. Typically, the book always starts with like alphabetical order. It doesn't have to be because it could be random letters. But well, that's notation. 
um, in case you like you're reading your textbook, which you should always be doing, um, and you're trying to figure out like what is it saying if it's like referencing certain pictures on the on the page. This is my this might be the notation they use in the book. Like oh look at the figure parallelogram A B C D. Kind of looks like a rectangle, but that's a specific type of parallelogram. Now the parallel symbols. It doesn't necessarily mean the walls are equal. That's one of our first properties we're going to see anyway. Um, it just means that the walls are parallel, that they don't touch. So they're kind of equally spaced. Now, uh, let's get to our first property, one of our first theorems today, uh, which is based on this picture. Um, it's one that I just actually just referenced a little bit ago. It's proving that certain walls are equal on a parallelogram. But is everyone good with the definition and the notation? Okay. Nelson, you good? Oh, looks like you're starting. Okay, Matt, you good? Okay. Mullen, you good? Okay. No, All right. Uh, let's jump right in here. First theorem, um, 6.3. We are going to do a little mini proof of it just to talk about it. Um, a quad is a parallelogram, so that's your start, that's the if part of the hypothesis, that you have a parallelogram in front of you. We want to prove that the opposite sides are equal in a, parallel, in a parallelogram. Prove that the opposite sides are equal. But the only thing we're given is the parallelogram. We're just given that certain walls are parallel to each other. We're going to try to prove it. Now, the proof is pretty short. I'm just going to... Um, really more or less going to go in very informal proof of paragraph or just kind of walk you through the talk. Um, I will give you a picture here in a minute. Now the picture is not going to be, um, not going to be um, you know, mind blowing. It's just the same things that parallelogram I gave you earlier. But now what we're trying to show is that the walls are actually equal. So like J, M, K, L are equal. J, K, and L, N are equal. That's, this is what we're trying to prove. I'm going to get rid of this picture here in a minute. But this is the whole goal of what that theorem is stating. That the walls have to be equal if you have a parallelogram. I'm going to get rid of this picture here in a second. I don't want those markers on the actual picture. That's what we're trying to prove. Okay. Okay. Get rid of that picture. Okay. So here we go. I want to prove that the walls are equal. Well, the one thing we do have as of this moment is we have certain walls are parallel because it is a parallelogram. That's what we're given. Here we go. Certain walls are parallel. All right. First step. Um, you always start with the obvious, um, line one, start with the, you know, you're given a parallelogram where the certain walls are parallel if you're writing the whole paragraph or flowchart. Certain walls are parallel. Boom, there it is. Second thing, we need to actually draw a line in the middle of this picture. We're going to draw a, one of the diagonals. Now, on this quad, there's two diagonals. We're going to draw one of them. Now, the reason why I'm drawing a single diagonal is that that diagonal actually splits your on your quad, the parallelogram, into triangles, if you can see that. Agreed? There is triangles there. Um, and in fact, since I broke that picture into triangles, um, if we can prove that the two triangles are equal, then certain walls are the same. Right? That's what I'm going to try to do in, in theory. Okay, now, to prove that, um, you have to go through the next couple lines and just do a normal triangle proof. So like, one of the lines, so line one, you write all the givens. Line two, I did my construction, I drew a line, J to L. Line three, I would probably talk about the reflexive wall. That this wall is equal to itself in both pictures. You know, it's that wall that's shared between the two triangles. So that's one marker in both triangles. One um, congruency marker. That's a side marker. Um, the next thing, um, since I have a bunch of parallel walls, so this would be like line number four, certain angles on this picture are equal since I have parallel walls, because parallel implies angles are equal. This angle right here is equal to that angle. Now the reason why, they're called alternate interior. So um, the reason why I know that those angles are equal is because the top and bottom are parallel. These are the angles that are squeezed between the top and the bottom. Now the other angles that are equal would be these two. Because the right and left walls are equal, 
or uh, are parallel, I mean. So it forces the two angles, and those are also alternate materials. So that'd be like line number four of my proof. Well, how many marks do I have in each triangle now? Three. Three. The triangles are equal, because it spells the correct acronym. The acronym that, the, that these markers are spelling is angle, side, angle. So the two triangles are, in fact, equal to each other. Well, if the two triangles are equal, I would actually write, you know, the top triangle JKL is equal to triangle LMJ. I would say the triangles are equal because of ASA, you know, postulate. And then I can get to the proof of what we're trying to prove. What are we trying to show? Yeah. Oops. We're trying to prove that the walls are equal. And that's true. The walls have to be equal to each other because the triangles are equal. So the opposite walls, this wall is equal to that wall because of CPCTC. And the top is equal to the bottom because of the same CPCTC. So it forced the two triangles to be equal. And it forces the picture to have equal walls. That is something that's unique about a parallelogram, if you're looking at it. The opposite walls have to be equal. Now, a lot of people, like, when they first look at a picture of a parallelogram, they're like, well, Ward, isn't it kind of common sense? Like, the walls are parallel, so they have to be the same size. I can have walls that are, you know, parallel, but they're not the same size. Like that. They're parallel, but they're not the same size. I understand when you have two pair of them, it kind of forces the issue. Um, but I'm just saying, like, this is one of the first properties. This is actually one of the reasons I'm going to come back to why a kite is not a parallelogram. Because when we get to that, that final, you know, sixth section of this chapter, we'll talk about kites. That is definitely not one of the, the uh, um, figures that is a parallelogram, even though it looks like it. You know, certain walls are equal. It's not opposite walls. Questions? Second theorem today. Second to last theorem. Does 6.3 have a name or is it just theorem 6.3? Uh, they call it the opposite sides theorem. So, for parallelograms. These are all, I would, I would always put these in boxes. And I would say like these are the parallel parallelogram theorems, and they call this one the opposite sides. Yeah. Six four. This is the opposite angles theorem. Opposite angles. If you have a quad that's a parallelogram, then the opposite angles are equal. So, as you're writing that, I'll give you the picture of what we're trying to prove here. This is what we're trying to prove. Now, I'm not, I'm not actually going to do the full-on proof here. I'm just going to do a one-second talk why this one works. But again, we are given a parallelogram. So certain walls are parallel. We need to prove the angles and the corners across from each other are equal. And then we'll, we'll go like all the way back and we're going to talk about, like at the very end, we'll talk about how do we use these in the homework. What are we going to do with this stuff? Eventually. Now again, I said I'm not going to do the full-on proof here because I just want to do a one-second walkthrough. How do you actually prove that the angles are equal? It's the same proof I just did. You would draw the diagonal through the middle. It doesn't matter which direction you go. You would talk about, you know, that this angle here and this angle are equal, this angle here and this angle are equal, the wall in the middle, so the two triangles are equal. Well, if the two triangles are equal, it forces the angles across from each other to be equal. They're, like, they're corresponding parts. That, you know, if this triangle down here is equal to that top triangle, then it forces K and M, the angles, to be the same. And then how you prove the other two, J and L, is you would do the whole proof over again, but you would actually draw the diagonal this direction instead. Then you would do you know, this angle here, and this angle, and this angle, and this angle, and the reflexive wall in the middle, and it forces the two triangles to be equal, and that would force the two angles opposite to be equal. 
So it's actually two full-on proofs that you actually have to do to prove that the angles across from each other are equal to each other. But they are equal in a parallel ring. So that's why in a rectangle, certain angles across from each other are equal. Like in a rectangle, they're both 90s in the opposite corners because they, they are forced to be the same in certain spots. Again, we'll come back. I'll show you a nice homework problem that we can do with this. I'll throw in some numbers that make sense. Last theorem today. This is my absolute last theorem. I said we're going to do three of them today. Okay, this one is called consecutive angles. Not opposite angles, but consecutive angles. Mr. Ward, what was the name of the last one? Opposite angles. It's called the opposite oh. angles. Now we did opposite, well, opposite sides, the last one. Now we did opposite angles. Now this one's consecutive angles. This one looks... This is the uh, this is the main one um, that will also help us with the last theorem. And I'll explain that in the last one just over here in a minute. But these are consecutive angles. So, um, what does the word supplementary mean? Adds up to 180. Adds up to be 180. So, consecutive angles. Angles. The word consecutive means angles that are next to each other. It's almost like the word adjacent, but they don't have to be physically touching. They're like if you were to go clockwise or counterclockwise, they're the angles that are. Um, one after another. So let me give you an idea here. Here's my pictures. Okay. So we know that from the last theorem that on this picture certain angles had to be the same. I should probably should move this picture a little bit. But anyways, um, on this picture we knew like from the last theorem, six four, the opposite angles, these two had to be equal, and these two had to be equal, right? Those are opposite angles. That's what the last theorem said. Well, this one says. The, the consecutive angles are equal. So when you either go clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter which direction you go, the ones that are next to each other, like that direction, or if you want to go like this direction, like it doesn't matter if you go clockwise or counterclockwise in any way you want, the two that are next to each other have to add up to be 180. So no matter which way you go, x plus y has to make 180. That's what it's saying. Now, why this one works? Like, if you're going to do a full-on proof of why, we've already proved this one. Let me explain. What type of shape was this before we started? What? What type of shape is this? Parallelogram. So the top and bottom are parallel, right? This, since this wall is parallel to the bottom, this is considered a transversal, right? It's a line that cuts through parallel lines. These angles are called same side interior. They're inside the parallel lines and they're same side of the transversal. This is the transversal, so on the same side they're squeezed in between. One of the theorems we had back in chapter three said that when you have two angles that are right next to each other inside parallel lines and they're on one side of the transversal, those angles have to be supplementary to each other. So we've already done the proof of this one. You can go back in chapter three and actually look it up. Okay, I believe that that theorem, I think it was like theorem 3.4 or 3.3, you have to go look. But again, that's the reason why this one has to work. Now, let me give you an, uh, let me go back to that last theorem once you guys have this copied down. Again, this one's called consecutive angles. I'm going to go back to the last problem and talk about what the homework could look like. Okay, is there, does everyone have this? Okay. So let's discuss that last theorem we did. Let's talk about how do we use this in a homework problem. Let's say that they gave me one angle. So somebody give me an angle that's kind of smaller. 23. 23, okay, I'm gonna go 23. Okay, I heard 23, I heard six, but let's go with 23. Okay, let's say this is 23 degrees here. Now it doesn't look like it, but let's say it's 23. It doesn't matter which, which way you go, um, if you go this direction or if you go this direction, these two angles that are right next to the 23 have to add up to be 180 with it because of that theorem 6.5. So if this is 23, then this angle has to be a 157 because they have to add up to be 180. And then what we can use with this theorem 6.4, the opposite angles, you can kick the angles across the picture. That's how we can use it in the homework. That if you have one angle, you can actually find all the rest of them on a parallelogram. You can kick them across, and you know the ones next to each other have to add up to be 180. So that, that might be a spot where you need a calculator. Now, how we use it for the walls. 
on that previous theorem. So on 6, 3, we talked about the opposite sides. If somebody give me uh, two numbers. 7 and 8. 7 and 8, or what was that other number? 36. 36, I'll go with 36. All right, 7 and 36. So let's say it's these two numbers. Well, what this theorem says, the opposite sides are equal. So, I can, so let's say this is 7 inches. I can, travel, I can uh, transfer the 7 inches across the picture. And that's 36 inches, I can transfer that across the picture. That's why it's useful. That's actually how you do it for rectangles as well. They, they have the same, the same properties. Okay, questions with how we're gonna use it. Now there's gonna be more stuff eventually, but this is like the start of it. You can transfer numbers around pictures. We're good? Done for the day. Nice to meet you.